Welcome back guys. This week we're going to talk about the myth of dopamine addiction. And in fact, a failure to understand dopamine, how it works, reveals an even deeper misunderstanding of how addiction works in general. I have been reading The Coddling of the American Mind by Jonathan Haidt and Greg Lukianoff. Lukianoff. Well, I've been reading it. I've been listening to it driving around in my car. And in it, they talk about dopamine addiction. Well, in general, the book is about how Gen Z kids, now they go to college and they lack the emotional, psychological foundation to have open, honest dialogue, especially with someone who disagrees with them politically. And one of the reasons that they point to in this book is Facebook on iPhones. Around 2007, 2009, we got iPhones and we got Facebook on iPhones. So now something is happening called a dopamine addiction or so they say. So now kids get a very easy dopamine hit by going on Facebook or any other social media and it's right there on their phone. It's with them all the time, oh, which is true. You know, we do get a hit of dopamine from going on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, but this is not exactly what we're addicted to. And in fact, there's a a subtle misunderstanding here, but it's important. And if we don't get how dopamine works or how any quote addictive chemical works and how it truly operates, we're not going to understand the root of addiction and we're not going to understand why our kids are on college campuses not communicating with each other very well, let's just say. It comes down to the question of does dopamine, uh, oxytocin, endorphin, any other feel good chemical, is it there to increase pleasure? or to decrease pain. Let me go through a few examples just to let you know what I'm talking about. Oxytocin, very important uh, neurotransmitter, very, very important chemical in our brain that actually aids the development of a child's brain and the mother's brain too. It, it aids the attachment between the mother and the child. So you'd think that oxytocin would be higher when the mother and the infant are cuddling or caressing each other, but that's not exactly true. Actually, oxytocin is highest right after the mother and the infant have spent a long time apart. The oxytocin, we realize, isn't there to increase pleasure so much as it is there to decrease the pain, the pain of the mother and the infant uh, being apart. And you know, any time mother and infant is, is any time a mother and infant is apart, it does cause some kind of psychological pain in both the mother and the child. What about runner's high? We think the runner's high comes from endorphins. Like your body is telling you, oh, this is good. Running is good. You need to do more of it. So we're going to release this thing called endorphins to make you feel good. So you want to run more. That's actually not what's going on. What happens is when you run, your body's in a lot of pain unless you're from East Africa. And so your body sends out this chemical endorphin to help decrease the pain. That's where the runner high endorphin comes from. It's not from, oh, this is good. We want you to do more of it. It's this is putting your body in a lot of pain and we're going to give you a pain reliever, an endogenous pain reliever. So you're not in pain. Now it may feel good, but that's not really what it's supposed to do. And what about an addiction? Where does the dopamine hit in addiction come from? When is it its highest? Is it as you're taking the drug? Not exactly. It's actually right before, as you're anticipating the use of the drug, that's when you get the biggest dopamine hits. Actually, when you're at the most painful in your addiction, that's when you get the hit of dopamine. And you talk to addicts and alcoholics as they're walking to the post office to get their drug that's been shipped to them or they're walking to their drug dealer's house, that's when they've been known to poop their pants. <laughs> the dopamine is so strong. The hate of dopamine so strong at that point, they poop their pants. I know that's not funny, but it is kind of funny. So this is a, like a very basic rule. We are way more motivated. Uh, yeah, very basic rule of motivation. We are way more motivated as humans. And you know, you can argue for whatever evolutionary reason. I'm not gonna go into that now, but it's just the truth. We are way more motivated, approximately 10 times more motivated to decrease pain as we are to increase pleasure. This is something that you learn working in advertising. If you have an ad for a Lamborghini, you don't say, hey, buy this Lamborghini. 
It's going to make you look cool and you're going to have a lot of fun. It's way more effective to have the ad say, if you don't buy this Lamborghini, your friends are going to think you're stupid. You're way more motivated to decrease pain as opposed to increasing pleasure. And this is really important to understand when it comes to addiction and dopamine addiction in particular, which everybody talks about. And we make it makes it seem like we're addicted to the dopamine hit. We're not. Why are we going after the dopamine hit in the first place? Well, you know what dopamine is there for, at least in part, to decrease pain. So wh why are we going after the dopamine hit? Why is Gen Z always on their uh, Facebook iPhone thing? To decrease pain. The question is, why are you seeking out that, quote, addictive experience in the first place? It's not because you want that experience. It's because you're trying to decrease the pain of whatever experience you were in previously. This is true for endorphins. This is true for uh, oxytocin or opioids. Right? It works on very similar pathways. And this is true for dopamine, quote, addiction. We're not addicted to the chemical, just to repeat myself, we are addicted to the pain or what's really causing the addiction is the pain we're in and we're trying to figure out a way to decrease the pain, not increase the pleasure. That's the point of addiction. And maybe a lot of you out there watching this right now, you're not addicts or alcoholics in any sense, but you go home at night, you have a couple glasses of wine. Next time you do this, notice how the wine makes you feel. Does it really increase pleasure or are you decreasing pain? Are you decreasing stress? And that may in turn may make you feel good. And you know, some drug addicts, when they lack self-awareness or they lack proper introspection, they'll say, oh, I, I, I was a drug addict because it was fun. I had a lot of fun partying. That's not exactly true. You had a lot of not pain by partying. And I mean, this gets played out because You'll, you'll see when addicts get better that they're clean for a while and then they go back out again, maybe they have a relapse. They'll tell you, it didn't have the same effect. Right, of course it didn't have the same effect because you're becoming psychologically healthier. You're managing the pain on your own. By the way, we're gonna get to what the pain is here in a minute. You're managing the pain on your own in a healthier way. So you go out and use opioids or heroin and you realize, wait a minute, that that drug is not meant to make you feel good. It's meant to make you feel not bad when you are feeling really bad. And what's this pain that we're talking about here? Of course, this pain is anxiety, often unconscious anxiety. People will go their entire life since they're four, five, and six in a perpetual state of anxiety, and they don't even know what it is. They try to go to therapy, not to correct the anxiety, they don't feel the anxiety, but they see themselves doing upset, having obsessive thoughts, compulsive behaviors, and they think there might be a problem with them psychologically. But as when it comes to feeling the anxiety that they're in, you know, they don't. It's like the fishes, uh, uh, the fish and water thing. It's like it, it's just part of your existence. Um, so yeah, so you don't even know what it is. It's been part of you for so long, you don't even know what it is. Now, when you have the drink of alcohol, you feel better, but you can't piece together that that's actually a decrease of pain, not an increase of, of pleasure. But yeah, that's the point here. I mean, manage your anxiety, look at unconscious anxiety that you have, threats coming into your life, threats that have been a part of your life for who knows how long. Uh, mostly conversations that you're not having, um, bringing up issues with people who are important to you that you're, you know, that you're avoiding bringing up. This is where a lot of our anxiety comes from. And it's, it's the only way how to manage the pain in a proper way is to deal with these threats in a healthy way. I'm, I'm not gonna go totally into it now. I have a bunch about anxiety all over this YouTube channel. Um, go to animusempire.com, click on eBooks, read Man's Guide to Psychology. We go into exactly what anxiety is. You're never gonna hear this from any psychologist, any therapist. What exactly anxiety? You're not even going to learn what an emotion is, but read Man's Guide to Psychology. Or if you don't want to spend the nine bucks, there's a bunch of uh, videos here on my YouTube channel telling you exactly what anxiety is and how to manage it. And then I think you'll see that you'll just find yourself without the addictions that you're supposedly, or yeah, without the things that you were supposedly thought you were addicted to. It wasn't that, it was just 
what you were really addicted to was removing yourself uh, from your own life. And I'll leave it there. Thank you guys for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And always remember when it comes to being addicted to something, it's not about being addicted to one thing in particular. It's really more about escaping who you are.